Hi guys, it's Debbie with Debbie J's Crafting Corner. Today I'm working on a project that is a collaboration between Picket Bits Studios and Pear Blossom Press. And these are the fun goodies that I am going to be playing with today. Let's start off by stamping out a cake or two. And so I'm stamping out one of the cakes using some VersaFine Claire Nocturne think that turns out lovely and then I'm going to heat emboss over the top to have a crisp image this is probably my favorite way because I know I always get a great result I'm going to go over this with just some clear and clear well embossing powder and then we'll heat that up using my Wagner heat gun So now I'm going to color these in using some of my Spectrum Noir markers, I think. I did have to go ahead and refill one. Luckily, I had a refill here, so I got one that is light enough. I'm using the AB1, and that's going to be for the sky part. I'm adding a few little shadows underneath the little, um, the decorations on the top of the cake. So they all brown the stars and the clouds. So it looks like they have a little bit of dimension. They're popped up a little bit from the side of our cake. For the stars and the sun, I'm gonna be using a couple of yellow markers. I'm starting off with the LY1. It's a lemon yellow. And did all the stars with that, and now I'm coming back in with CT4, which is a little bit more of an orange, and I'm gonna do some darker shades of my sun with that. And then again, using the lemon yellow to blend it out. And then for this little rainbow up at the top, I'm starting with the yellow because yellow is not going to bleed into the other ones. I'm going to do some LY1, then I've got IB2 as my blue. So it's a different color of blue than the sky that I've got down here. And then I've got a purple, which I'm using HB3. And then the last one I'm going to do is going to be a red because red does bleed, so I'm saving it to last just in case. And that is going to be my DR3. So now we've got a cute little rainbow up there in the top of the cake. So I decided for the base, I'm going to go with the yellows. I kind of was going to gray and then I was thinking maybe I would go um, with some blues but I think the yellow is being nice and bright so I'm just adding some darker yellow this is the CT4 that I used earlier to some of the pieces that I think would have a shadow and then I'm going to bring in my LV, um, LY1 to blend those out. I'm going real light in the center so that there's not a lot of ink and it makes it kind of shine a little bit brighter there. And our, our little cake is done. So another thing I forgot that I was planning on using was a stencil from Picket Fence. This one is the What's Your Sign? stencil and it's got yeah it's got a lot of stars it's actually got some astrological signs like this one is like the big dipper actually i think it's the big dipper all over the place anyway with lots of stars lots of hearts i think it's going to be super pretty and i'm just going to decorate up my background give a little interest to the back and i'm going to use the same colors as our little rainbow so i've got my paper pouncers from Pick Up Pence Studio and some of my favorite inks from Simon Hurley and Catherine Pooler and I think I'm going to start off, like I did before, with the yellow. And I've just got this in my, um, in my Misty. There's, it's actually got plenty of room in my Misty. And I'm using a Waffle Flower Sticky Grid in here. Or sticky Mat. Sticky Mat in here so that it keeps it, it stays in place. And I am just randomly coming down with some of that yellow ink. Let's go another layer just to make it a little bit darker. 
And then I'll use some blue with my Remember Me. And I think those are probably enough places on there and I'm just going to go back over it again, just like before. Now the paper pouncers make it really, really easy to add color to to your cardstock. And then using the sticky mat keeps everything steady and still so you don't have to worry about moving your stencil. Okay, so next I'm gonna come in with, let's go with some red. And this one is gonna be Bee Sting. And if it overlaps, that's okay. It's just gonna make the colors blend a little bit. Okay, and then we're gonna come in with some pixie dust. Now my pixie dust, I'm pretty sure is kinda dry. So that means it's not gonna be heavy on here. I don't think I've re-inked it recently. We'll see. And I'm gonna start off with places where the red and the blue would kind of mix together. Yeah, it looks like this is pretty dry. I do need to re-ink that. Okay, and I'm gonna say that that is gonna be done. It's gonna just give us some nice color in the background and some nice, um, oh, let's see what it does. Oh, that looks fun. It kinda looks like party confetti. Love that. So now we're going to get everything ready to add our light. So what I'm doing, I've got a piece of plastic packaging, actually it's from the die, and I'm getting my stamp about where I want to have my little die cut ha um, cake go. So that is about where I want it. And I'm going to lightly stamp. Doesn't need to be much. So I'm gonna do, actually do the stamping in one of my stamp pads that is kind of dry. This one is Hero Arts. I just stamp that onto the background that we just did. Actually, I changed my mind because, yeah, I remembered what I saw somebody else do and I thought that is just genius. So I've got another piece of cardstock. This time I've got it in black and I'm going to stamp with some unicorn white pigment, pigment ink onto the black in the same spot. So I heat set this so that it doesn't smear and I am poking a hole inside each of these little heart, um, little stars up at the top just using a pokey tool and I'm using a magic mat since it is a self healing mat to protect my glass surface. I think I was initially thinking of using a one light so instead I'm gonna actually use the easy lights because it's got the three lights. Next, I'm gonna do something I'm not real good at. I'm going to experiment with a craft knife and cut out my little sun here. Okay, it's not perfect, but it's there. So before I, before I do any adhering of anything down, I'm gonna double check and make sure everything works the way I want it. So my lights are good after putting my battery in. And then I'm gonna just take a piece of tape real quick and put them in place and see if that's where I want them. And we're gonna do this on the out on the back. And I may just let it go as is, and we're gonna see if this is gonna line up the way I expect it to. Now our lights, there is a piece of metal on the back, and then the bulb part is on the front, so you wanna make sure that the LED part is poking out through your hole. And then I'm gonna place this one right at the base of my sun. Okay. 
line that up. So I'm lining it up at the bottom and on the left side, and I think those went about in the center of my little stars. Perfect. Now I'm gonna add this last one, this last light behind my sun. And I think I'm gonna have that one kind of in the center of the sun. And that one's gonna be easier to line up because the hole's bigger. Okay, let me grab my other piece of tape. Again, making sure that my light is facing forward towards the bottom of the card and we're going to tape it down right about right about there that looks good okay and now i can just test it one more time yeah have to test it i think that is going to look so so cute Um, I'm also, because after putting this one over the top, I noticed that you can't really see the lights as much as what I would like, so I've just got a piece of tape on the back. So there we go. Now we can have that little bit of glow behind our stars. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did on the first panel with this one. I'm going to cut out that sun area. Okay, one more test. And I like the glow. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting everything together. So I'm gonna have my button here and the little battery pack a little bit away from the edge because I know I'm probably gonna want to trim everything down a little bit once I get done. And I'm just going to adhere it all down, all of my wires down with just some scotch tape and grab some double-sided adhesive and that's what I'm going to tack my my battery pack down with that's going to be so cute yes Okay, <clears throat> next we're going to take out one of my favorite things from Pear Blossom Press, and that is the world's best foam tape. This stuff is fabulous. If you haven't already heard about it, if you've watched my videos, you already know, but if you haven't already heard about it, first off, it is double thick, so it is the perfect thickness for using on shaker cards or your light up cards, so it's the same thickness as what our battery pack is. Everything goes nice and flush. That's number one. So number two, it, the release paper releases very nicely. So it doesn't, you don't have to fight with it like so many others that I've used in the past. But the absolute best part of it is that if you put it down and you change your mind, it's repositionable for, for up to 30 minutes so that you don't rip your card. I mean, you spend so much time putting together a light up card or a shaker and want everything to be just perfect you don't want it to be ripped <clears throat> because you accidentally put something down in the wrong spot and on interactive cards i have done it more than once where i have put things down just a little bit wrong and had to move the tape so i'm staying away from the edge because i know i'm going to be trimming this up so now our mechanism part is all done and it's nice and flat. So when it goes on to, when it goes on the card, you're I'm really not gonna notice anything until you push the button. I think that is just so super cute. So I stamped in some bee sting, the word press from the Pear Blossom Press Stamp and Buy, Stamp and Die bundle set. They got a bunch of 
cool sentiments to let you know exactly where to push your button or other things when you're wanting to do things with interactive cards and it also includes some dies so that you can cut out candle flames and this one here this one acts as a door and we're going to be using that in a little bit as well but that's this is where our button is going to be so once this has plenty of time time to dry then i can go back and gently with just a regular eraser erase that little pencil mark that you really can't see very much I think it's still going to be fine okay so now what i need is a sentiment i picked out this one of the sentiments in that <sighs> birthday stamp set and this one says a slice of cake can make the difference between a good day and a bad day and i'm going to put that right up here in the top and i'm coming in just a little bit from the edge because i know remember i said i was going to trim it off so i have not trimmed this yet i'm going to wait till i get everything put together and then trim it down so I know I'm not having any kind of issues with the mechanism or the foam or anything like that. So I'm going to stamp it with some VersaFine Claire Nocturne. So now I'm going to glue our confetti background onto our black panel and making sure everything lines up just perfect and this side is a smidge off so let's go ahead and just trim that off just a touch and then this side I'm going to trim it down so it's at four inches and now that is perfect next I'm going to pop this guy up on top and this time I'm just going to use a regular um, thin layer of foam I do want to pop it up I want it a little bit away from the background so I'm using my scotch foam tape for this and I'm going to avoid the Sun so right across here and then another one going down our stand and I think I'll put a little bit behind our rainbow Perfect. Okay, and now we can adhere that down to our card base. And like I mentioned earlier, oh, I just remembered something that I decided I was going to do. I want to use the door. I do want to use the door. So that needs to go on our card base. It's going to actually have a door on the inside of the card. Let me put my release paper back down on the couple of pieces that I took it off of okay so here's our card base and then we're going to have this over the top and then i want the door to go right about here so this piece up here is not going to cut through it's going to be attached so i can just have this right about there i'm going to tape that down with some of my best ever craft tape and we're going to run through our die cutting machine just on the front of the card. So just this bit here. And you're probably wondering, why do we need a door? This is so that the recipient can change out the battery later if they want to. So I've got this right behind our mechanism. Okay, now I can put this onto our card. I think this turned out super, super cute. And I love the way that it lights up. I love light up cards. Yes. Anyway, um, you guys have a wonderful day. Be sure to check out all of the other hoppers along the way and see all of the inspiration that they have to share with you. And I will catch you in the next video. Bye, guys.